In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to estimate your tool pass times within the software. Now you'll notice in front of me, I have a welcome to our home sign, which is available in the free trial software, as well as the full software. Uh, so if you do want to access this and download this to use as a template for testing your times in the software, you can do so by going to our website. But if you follow my mouse pointer for now, we're going to go up to the top left of the software here and click on this button here to switch over to the toolpath menu. So let's left mouse click on that. And if you follow my mouse pointer over to the right, you'll notice I have a toolpath menu with two toolpaths. I have a pocket and a cutout, and this is what they look like currently. I'm just going to uncheck those because now we're going to have a look at estimating the toolpath times. And the way we do that is by using this tool just here is a toolpath summary. And you can see when I hover over it, it says summary of all toolpaths, including estimated time. So let's click on that. It has a little clock symbol there to indicate that it's the estimated times menu. Now you notice when I open it, a couple of things have occurred. On the 3D view, my toolpaths have been highlighted because the software recognizes when I enter this tool that I have toolpaths within uh, my design here. So it's checked those on for me. So they are now live for me to check. Now you'll notice if I uncheck the toolpath, if you keep an eye on this top half of the menu, it will no longer show it. So if you want to only see a particular toolpath time, you can do so. You can also just check all your toolpaths here with this button here to show all of them. So let's go through the form. At the very top, we have the name of the tool, which is the toolpath summary tool. Underneath that, we have the total machining time. Then we have the individual toolpaths. We have the pocket and we have the cutout and with our times respectively on the right hand side here. Now the total machining time is a combination of all of the toolpaths here. So that's the 126 plus the seven to get this value here uh, for the total machining time. Now this time or speed is essentially theoretical because we don't exactly know how our CNC machine is going to behave. Every CNC machine works differently. They accelerate and decelerate differently. They handle corners, 2D moves and 3D moves in a different ways. And so all those different things can affect the actual time it takes for the part to be cut. So there's a couple of different pieces of information we can use here to try and get a more accurate estimated time for our tool pass. So to start, we can follow my mouse pointer down here to the time estimates based on and the first one is the rapid rate. Now the rapid rate is when the tool lifts up and it moves its fastest rate possible to get to the next position so they can plunge and carry on machining. That is called the rapid rate. Now this value here is correct for my current settings on my machine, but do double check these for your machine. And you can indeed left mouse click on this drop down list here, and you can set this to the parameters that you need. So you have millimeters per second, millimeters per minute, uh, meters, per minute, inches per second, inches per minute, and feet per minute as well. So you can use any one of these values here uh, to help enter your rapid rate. Now underneath that, you will see the scale factor. Now, this is a value I can actually tweak or change to more accurately represent the time it is taken to machine my design on my actual CNC. So for example, you would want to first set your scale factor to one for your very first uh, toolpath. So what you want to do is, in this case, I have my home sign. I would run all of these toolpaths with my scale factor set to one. And it currently says it's gonna take one hour and 33 minutes. If I come to now machine this in reality on my CNC machine and it takes twice the amount of time, I know that I can now set my scale factor to two to more accurately, accurately represent my actual machining time. You'll notice that my time has now changed up here to 2.53 with my scale factor. But my actual time on the machine itself was closer to three hours. So let's try and get this value up to three. So if I put in 2.1, for example, for my scale factor, it's now gone to 3.01, which is very close to the actual value or the actual runtime on my CNC in reality. So you can see how by using the scale factor to your advantage, you can try and get more accurate machining times. Now you will see underneath there's an option for machine acceleration, but we'll cover that in just a moment. I'm just gonna go over the notes uh, briefly before we go back to machine acceleration. So the notes section allows you to give individual notes to individual toolpaths. So for example, in this case, if I knew I wanted to run my pocket before my cutout, I can assign a note to say, run this 
toolpath first and I can hit apply and that will apply that note to just that toolpath. You'll notice if I now click on the cutout toolpath, it doesn't show the note because that note is specifically only for this pocket. So that means if I ever come to run this sign again, let's say I'm making a whole bunch of these uh, for someone, then I can come back to this, open up the form, check my timings, but also see a note right away to say, oh, okay, I need to make sure I run the pocket toolpath first. So really handy if you are the type of person who likes to take notes or give yourself reminders when you're running designs multiple times. So with that covered, let's have a look at the next option in the menu, which is the machine acceleration. So let's left mouse click on that to activate it. And you'll notice underneath I get a drop down list for my machine. Now these machines I've already set up in the software, which will have the information about my particular machine and the post processors I need for it. Now, if you need to know how to do that, there is a linked uh, video called the machine configuration guide, which you can follow and learn about how to do that for your machine. Now to the right of it is a button and I can press this button to open the machine configuration menu. So let's do that. Now, what this option here does for machine acceleration is it offers another way for us to accurately try and map our estimated toolpath times, but this will use the acceleration values on our CNC machine. You'll notice at the top of the menu, I have the drop down again to select my machine. And I have all the information about my machine already set up here and the post process at the bottom. But we want this section here, which is the acceleration. Now these values have been populated for my CNC machine and these will be specific to my particular CNC machine, which is why it's very important at this stage that I must uh, inform you that you need to find out these values for yourself from your machine manufacturer. They'll be able to tell you how to access these values on your controller or indeed how to find the options to access these on your controller. So if you need to know the values for your acceleration, talk to your machine manufacturer, they'll be able to tell you how to find out these values on your specific CNC machine. Now, the values represented here are for the X axis, the Y axis, the Z axis, and the angle is if you have a rotary option on your machine. And to the right of it, you will notice you have the drop down list for the uh, input here, which is the uh, in my case, it's millimeters per second squared. And again, you will find this on your controller. It should list it as to what value it uses. You have inches per second squared, millimeters per minute squared, inches per minute squared, meters per minute squared, and feet per minute squared. And crucially for the angle, it is the radian squared or the degrees squared. So you need to find that out if you have a rotary option on your machine. Again, talk to your machine manufacturer, they'll be able to fully inform you as to how to find this out on your machine. Now to actually get these values accurate is very important because they will be specific to your CNC machine. Every single CNC machine will behave differently. So these values will be specific to your CNC machine. To go over this further a little bit and to talk about acceleration in further detail, if we use the example in the background here of the welcome sign, when you go to cut this, as the tool drops into the material, it will accelerate up to the feeds and speeds that you've set in the tool database and your toolpath options. It will then cut across at that speed if it can indeed reach that full speed, depending on how long the cut actually is. And then it will decelerate as it approaches this corner to round it, and then it will accelerate again to try and get up to that full speed, cut all the way across, and then decelerate into that corner. Now, if you'd like to think of this as a racetrack with two different types of cars on it, so for example, if you have a Formula One car and a civilian car, they're going to approach the corner and accelerate out of the corner in very different ways. And the same applies here for the CNC machines. And that is why it's very important that you get these values right, because uh, depending on your tolerances and your uh, acceleration speeds for your CNC machine, it will approach the acceleration and deceleration in different ways, or in this case, different values, uh, depending on your controller capability. So do make sure that you uh, liaise with your machine manufacturer to make sure you get these absolutely correct. But with that in mind, when you have these uh, settings all ready to go, you can hit apply, click OK, and you'll see now that your estimated toolpath time will have been reflected over here with your machine acceleration here. And you'll notice for me, it made an hour difference. So uh, a much more accurate way of getting a estimated toolpath time. So for those of you who'd like to use that uh, controller setting to your advantage, you can do so using the machine acceleration uh, option as well. But for now, that covers our tutorial on how to use the uh, toolpath summary in the software to help you estimate your toolpath times. And of course, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.